Hey guys, so these are the games from the first tournament finals against Anacondas, which I'm sure most of you have probably already forgotten about. But nonetheless, we finally got our games in after about uh, one month. So I'm sure most of you, or some of you, have already seen these games on Tyler's channel, which he uploaded a couple days ago. So you probably already know the result of this. But I guess it's still worth watching these games from my perspective, and maybe you might learn a little something from it. So anyways, the first map is cards, which we both agreed to be the starting map. Um, and you can see I'm using normal, my normal attack shooter strategy loadout. While on Tyler's side, you can see he's going for a really interesting strategy, something I've never seen before from, um, since this game. And you can see he's using ninjas and bomb towers, which I've never seen anyone do on cards. Most people usually just go with the boomer bomb farm strategy, or strategy I'm using. But it's Tyler, so uh, of course you you expect something interesting from him. Uh, so it's around six now. I get up my ring of fire, and Tyler shows a farm. So I actually kind of expected that he would go for farm because you see he places uh, he has a ninja at right at the front of the track that he placed uh, at the beginning of the game. So, so I could only assume that he was trying to anti stall, which actually kind of worked because it definitely hindered my economy a bit. You see, it's only at six thirty on round nine, which is pretty bad. And yeah, <laughs> poopy eco. Uh, yeah, only six thirty six, which is actually pretty low. Um, I've seen other people try to anti stall. On cards while using uh, the boomer strategy, and even with that anti stall, it got around 670 ish. So, Tyler's anti stall was definitely a, a lot better. So, it's round 13 now. Tyler gets a 4 2 cannon for the uh, Riga Rainbow Rush, which I'm not gonna send in this game. And I get up a 3 2 ace um, for the ceramics, as well as a couple 3 0 attack shooters. Uh, the reason I use uh, 3-2 Monkey Ace for round 15 is because it helps versus ceramics as well as it, it provides a pretty good camo detection which limits the opponent from trying to exploit your mortar because if you only have your mortar for camo detection on cards it's not gonna bode well because if you put it uh, at the first bend it won't catch all camel pinks, and if you try to put it in the second bin where it could catch all camel space pinks, uh, then you're prone to a uh, camel exploit where uh, your opponent could send Rico Rainbow's Fall by Camel Pinks to overwhelm your mortar. So that's that. Um, round 19, and you can see on Tyler's side, he really doesn't have that many farms, which is kind of surprising because on um, at around round 20, you could probably get a lot more farms than that. Uh, I was kind of expecting him to send a rush at me in this case, because cause after round 20, uh, the only opportunity you have to kill your opponent would be late game uh, by sending his oh my gods. But uh, for the first tournament, uh, the the game actually ends at the start of round 36, so it's actually a lot easier to defend a rush. So yeah, it's now up to Tyler to send a rush at me. But it doesn't look like he's going to rush me anytime soon because he just sold all his farms for the, the 4-2 farm. So now at this point, it would probably be best for me to go eco. And you can see... I don't really have that much income. Only one th one thousand at round twenty five, which is pretty bad. Um, but one thousand eco isn't gonna get you anywhere late game, so I definitely have to build that up before uh, the rush. So at this point, it's pretty much just building up my eco and defense. Uh, 
for when he rushes me. Which, uh, the best time is probably around three to four rounds before, uh, the start of round 36. So that would be somewhere around, around 32 or 33 zero MG rush. And uh, it should definitely be a pretty close one, cause, uh, cards is a pretty short map, and I, and I really don't have like, great towers for the game. I mean, one case is good for the ground zero and all, but it, after the nerf, it really doesn't do much damage. So, basically, you have to rely on your maulers and assassins for the, for the ZOMGs, and the ground zeros for the, the BFPs and under. But, uh, with the low amount of eco I have, it's definitely, I'm definitely gonna have a hard time with it. So it's round thirty now, and sending Anaconda is sending a uh, ZOMG rush, which is which actually caught me off guard because I expected him to send one a little bit earlier than this. I mean, a little bit later. And I only just stopped Eco at that point, so and I don't really have much much money on hand, so definitely gonna have a hard time with it. You can see I'm actually kind of strapped for cash. Trying to sell everything for ground zero. Um, it's actually getting pretty close. The, the zero MGs are getting halfway through the, the map. Gotta keep spending the ground zeros, but it's definitely gonna have, I'm definitely gonna have a hard time because don't have enough money for it. And, trying to mortar stall and, uh, ground zero it. And I just barely, um, ground zero at a time before those, uh, Moabs got through the exit. So it's, I'm actually even losing lives here, like very slightly. But still, actually, pretty. It was actually much closer, too close for comfort. Actually, and it's around 35, and uh, Anacondas doesn't have enough. Doesn't have enough camo popping power, and that's GG for game number one. So I'm up one zero now, and. Anacondas chooses Ice Flow. So it'll be interesting to see what strat he comes up with that. Um, I'm actually pretty prepared for this map. Because since it's, it's, it's the first map for King of the Hill, so it's definitely really important that you have a good strategy for it. Because in pretty much every King of the Hill series, you're going to be playing this map. You can see I bring uh, Boat Ninja. Bomb tower and mortar, and um, Anaconda's going for attack shooter and bomb tower. So, you might be wondering why I'm not going with the ray of fire on this map, even though it's it's actually there's a really good spot for it. Uh, the reason for that's because I suppose it's just one of those maps where it's you really can't kill your opponent until late game, but as you can see this map is like 80% water, so you can, there's only one spot to fit the monkey ace and one spot to place your mortar, so you have to be really creative for late game and so um, you can see there's a purpose for pretty much every tower I use uh, for the boats um, 2-4, um, X-4 monkey pirate ability is actually really useful for late game because it can take down a single BFB with one use of the ability and no matter what the health is, so any round it will take down a full BFB. And also, um, I bring the ninja for the 2-4 ninja ability which slows down all balloons to half speed for 15 seconds. So it's actually really useful, and bomb towers, of course. Uh, pretty much, bomb towers are essential for every single map. And uh, the mortar, of course, for camo detection. And even then, the two four mortar ability is really useful. So, so yeah, it definitely looks like I have an edge 
over um, Tyler for late game because pretty sure he showed all his four towers: Dart Monkey, Tax Shooter, Mortar, and Bomb. And he doesn't really that have that many great late game towers. I mean, Tax Shooter, it's really bad for around 30 plus. You're not really gonna have much use for it. Ring of Fire is only for early and mid game where it can where it um it's really cost efficient, really cheap, has good popping power. Um and uh Dart Monkey, which is really only good for the Super Monkey Fan Club or Super Juggernaut. But on this map, it's de he's definitely gonna have a hard time fitting ten Dart Monkeys as well as all of his other towers. Cause look how much land there is. Boats are pretty much essential for this map if you actually want to survive pretty late. Because you're definitely going to need a lot more land space uh, to survive late game. So you can see, he's already placed 7 dart monkeys, and yeah, that's pretty much all he could fit. So he's definitely going to have a hard time with that, whereas uh, I have space for pretty much uh, all my towers. I could pretty much spam boats across the whole map if I happen to run out of space. So yeah, that's that. Um, you can see, I'm actually down in lives, but I don't really think it matters this game because probably won't go to around uh, 35. You see, I'm just pretty much going all out eco right now because you really, you really can't kill your opponent. Uh, around this time, if they're playing well enough, which it looks like both of us are. But you see, um, uh, Tyler's lack of land space is definitely starting to affect him because pretty, pretty sure he's filled up every single spot by now. And it's round 26. Uh, uh, you can see Tyler, he doesn't have enough MOA popping power and his. Mob assassins don't recharge in time, and that's pretty much it for him. So that's a pretty unfortunate death. Uh, so it's 2 0 right now. Uh, if you didn't know, it's best of 7. So, first to get to 4 games wins the series. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I split this video into two parts because of the 15 minute uploading limit. Uh, I'm probably gonna try to solve that soon so I can actually upload longer videos, but for now, I'll be splitting any videos that are longer than 15 minutes. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the second part of this video.